Before I get into the topic of how to tell if a man is attracted to you, I think it's really important to differentiate the three different types of attraction. What I mean by three different types of attraction, there are certainly men who are serious about a relationship, they're serious about commitment, they're serious about seeking a life partner. Now, before I get into the other two, really quickly, are you a woman seeking a life partner? If it's yes, please hit that like button right now or post a comment so I know that you're a woman who seriously wants a life partner. So I just said, within attraction, there are men who seriously want a life partner and then there are men who just simply seek attraction from the sexual perspective. All they want is a physical conquest. They want a sexual partner. And that is another form of attraction. And the third type of attraction, which most men, women, excuse me, experience today in the dating marketplace is what I call dependent attraction, dependent attraction. We also might call this needy attraction. OK, this might be also known as a, uh, ambivalent attraction. OK, in fact, many of you are probably experiencing it more from an ambivalent place. What I mean to say is a man might invest in you because he seeks companionship. He might seek connection. He might seek sex, okay, from an either ambivalent place, a needy place, or a dependent place. And those men are what I call spenders. What they want is they want to spend time with you, but these men aren't capable of anything serious. And my channel is geared for those women who want a serious relationship. And let's just agree right now, the dating marketplace sucks. It is an absolute mess out there. It is absolutely frustrating. And it's true for men and women alike. Sadly, sadly more so for women because women will oftentimes compromise themselves for, um, for a man because women tend to want a life partner more so than men because men are driven by that sexual attraction. And then there are the men that are driven by the dependent needy or the ambivalent attraction. And so you might be confused about men because they might express some interest. So you're thinking it's the serious type of attraction when in fact it's either a sexual. Now those are pretty easy to spot. These are the guys who lead with sex. These are the love bombers. These are the guys that, um, you know, they're, they're dropping sexual innuendos. They're dropping dick pics, you know, that sort of thing. Those are rather easy to spot, except with the love bombers, if you're coming from a dependent place, you might feed off of that validation and surrender temporarily to this person who is, is simply wants sex or he wants to use you in some capacity. The tricky part are those spenders, those men that have dependent, needy, or ambivalent attraction, because it represents about 60% of the men out there. The users are about 20%, and what's left is, are those growers, those builders, those men who want a serious relationship, and that only represents 20%. This is why I devised my private coaching to help you identify and actually attract more of the serious type of guys and avoid those men who are going to use you, that are dependent, they're ambivalent, and they're needy. If you need some support with that, look, there's a link in the description below to schedule a free discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. So today we're going to lean into the man who is serious, okay? The man who's serious, the man who genuinely wants a life partner. Now, folks, I, I do want to share with you you know, a lot of you are experiencing casual relationships. A lot of you are experiencing uh, what I call friends with benefits, but you don't really know about it because you've agreed to physical intimacy with someone, or maybe you have acquiesced to physical intimacy without any clear understanding if this person wants a serious relationship with you. And I want you to immediately step into your power, step into your sovereignty, step into your self-worth, your self-esteem, your self-confidence. In fact, I wrap this up in the, uh, my book called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, Spiritual Work. There's a link below to get a copy of my book. Why am I drawing attention to this right now? I want you to stop accepting breadcrumbs. I want you to stop accepting bad behavior. I want you to stop accepting men who are in it only for the short run. <clears throat> 
So serious men operate a little bit differently and serious men show up demonstrating attraction in a little bit different way. So today we're going to talk about those seven ways that men who are growers, builders, who want a serious relationship, how they show up in the form of attraction. Now, some of these are going to seem like the dependent, needy men, the users, they all do this. But I think once you see the totality of it, you'll recognize <coughs> the difference. By the way, I think I have a, a leftover peanut in my throat. Mm. Excuse me. So number one, now this is in the early stages of dating. A man will, gen um, he will give you genuine eye contact, genuine eye contact. And what I mean by eye contact, it's not just staring deeply into your soul, but I know with my sweetheart, and there's a picture of Marie and I on New Year's Eve. I know that I find myself just staring at her at times. I just, I'm so, um, I'm so connected, not connected. I'm, I'm just feeling this, um, desire from her, but it's not sexual. It's just, I like looking at her. And I was thinking of my best friend who shared the same thing with me uh, recently. He's He's been in a relationship for two years now. And the other day she goes, what are you doing? He goes, I'm just staring at you because I like you. When a man actually gazes into your eyes. Now, this isn't first, second, or third date. This is when he's actually really have connected, you know, you've established a little bit of, 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 of trust with one another. By the way, if you're not familiar with the work of um, Jay Shetty, he, takes this, he says it takes about 40 hours of face-to-face -face time just to barely get to know someone. And I've always said it takes about 100 hours of face-to-face -face time just to build the first layer of trust. And it takes about 200 hours of face-to-face -face time doing social activities, hobbies, mutual interests to develop a friendship with someone. And when someone has developed that friendship with you and they're still looking at you with a gaze of just joy, that's a great sign he's attracted to you. Number two, his acts are chivalrous. He opens the car door. He walks on the outside of the street. He pulls out the chair for you. He stands up when you walk into a room. That's certainly a sign. A serious guy does this. Now, we have to be careful because users do this and those dependent, needy, and ambivalent um, men do this as well, those spenders. But I want you to look at the totality, the totality of how he shows up. Men who are serious are more apt to do these things than those who are a bit flaky. And he acts chivalrous um, with you. And that's a good sign that he's attracted to you. Number three, he's protective and territorial. Again, the ambivalent, the dependent, the needy guys do this. Uh, the users do this. But I know with my sweetheart, once, I, once we agreed to explore being in a relationship with one another... I wanted her off the dating apps. I wanted her off the market. I expressed a desire to take myself off the market, but I also wanted to covet her because men are territorial. We don't want you engaging with other men if we're genuinely serious about you. Now, we don't do it from a dependent, needy place. Dependent, needy men might do this, but from a serious place, it's demonstrating first that I am open to taking myself off the market and a request to take yourself off the market because men are naturally territorial. That's part of what makes us protective. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this, okay? Number four. Now, this might be really confusing, but if a guy is really attracted to you, he might temporarily pull away. He might temporarily pull away. And this usually happens right after you've been physically intimate with a man. I know that in my experience, in my relationship, after we spent our three solid days together, really laying our cards on the table, really being radically honest with one another, I found myself just temporarily pulling away. Um, because in that pulling away, a man needs time to really evaluate, is this the person I'd like? When we really like someone, we do a natural temporarily pull away. It might be for a few hours. It might be a day or two, but we're really assessing, is this the person I want to invest in? 
Now, this usually happens after sex. It can happen before sex. And again, it's a temporary um, pullback. Sometimes you don't even know he's pulling back. It might be an energetic pullback, but that's the time that he really evaluates. Is this the person I genuinely want to invest in? And what happens next is he expresses appreciation for you. I know when that, that brief little pull away I had with Marie, um, I realized, wow, this is someone I really appreciate. In that brief moment of, of, of pulling away, in a way I kind of missed her, but what I realized was I didn't miss her. What I really did was appreciate her. And then I expressed appreciation. By the way, men who genuinely are attracted to you, I want you to really think about the words grateful, gratitude, and appreciation. Grateful, gratitude, and appreciation. I continually say to my partner, I'm so grateful you're in my life. I appreciate all the kind things you do for me. I'm in a state of gratitude when I'm with you. Those are great signs when a man uses those words, when he demonstrates true appreciation for you, that's a great sign that a grown-up is attracted to you because here's the thing, the users, they won't do that. The, the spenders, those, those ambivalent, those needy, those dependent men, they won't do that. They might, they might constant. the users will constantly back and forth with you. They'll pull away, they'll come back. They'll pull away, they'll come back. Dependent, needy people, they'll pull away, they come back. Or worse, if they're really dependent, they will smother you, okay? But these are men, by the way, most of the users, as I said in the beginning of this broadcast, they want companionship, they want sex, they want connection, but they're not capable of, they're not capable of diving deeper into commitment. This is the problem that plagues our relationship marketplace today because we, because of these devices, because of our devices and swiping, we have all this access to people that wouldn't otherwise have been in our, in our, in our purview. And this is why ladies, I'm here to encourage a different way to date, mate and relate. I'm here to implement what I teach in my private coaching, which is called radical honesty, pre-qualifying your prospect. I'm here to encourage laying, uh, laying your cards on the table sooner rather than later. And most importantly, adopting the uh, um, rules of engagement. And one of the rules of engagement I invite you to, by the way, here's a copy of what's called my dating vows, okay? It's a vow you make before you give your heart to someone. This is part of the rules of engagement. And, and, and by the way, if you want a copy of this, schedule that discovery call with me and I'll give you a copy of it uh, when we meet on the phone. So the dating vow simply is an agreement between two people, an agreement to two people to explore getting to know one another. If there's going to be regular sex, you agree to monogamy. If you're going to have regular sex, you agree to exclusivity in the dating realm and you agree to spend how you're going to spend your time together. But Jonathan, if I ask for that, a man might run away. Who are you scaring? The, the, the users, the ambivalent, the needy, the dependent guys, those guys who are spenders? Because I guarantee you, a man who genuinely likes you, he's genuinely into you and thinks you're a good fit in his life, he will adopt this. I can't tell you how many of my clients now reach out to me and say, in fact, one of the things I'm actively doing is speaking to their boyfriends, going over all the work we've done together so they can be on the same page. And guess what these men are saying? They're saying, thank you for making my job easier because those serious men, might, you know, they're genuinely serious, but they just don't know the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship. They don't know the mechanics to true intimacy. And intimacy is in to me you see into me you see if you're not familiar with the book emotional intimacy by robert masters most of you focus on physical intimacy and i'm here to educate to in, invite you to explore emotional intimacy and that again this is what we do in my private coaching i help you really gain a stronger grasp of true intimacy because many of you are in relationships or you're talking to men and all you're doing is, how's your day going? Did you have a good day? I hope you had a good day. That's Kramer from Seinfeld. Ex okay. 
I said expressing appreciation. That demonstrates a man is into you or is extremely attracted to you. Number six, he teases you. His little kid comes out. I know I teased Marie in the beginning of our relationship. I called her Beverly Hills Glam. She's glammed up in that picture right there. But I called her Beverly Hills Glam. But when a man, now again, users might do this, spenders might do this. But when a man is genuinely attracted to you, his little kid comes out. You can see the difference with the little kid. It's not coming from a... Um, agitated place. It's coming from that fun, playful side. I will tell you, one of the best parts of any relationship is when our little kids come out and we can play to one another. That's really the sign that you're actually building a deeper relationship with someone when you can actually step into your little kid. We all have a little kid inside of us. It's one of the things you find charming in us men. It's one of the things we find charming in women is when our little kid comes out. And our little kids, our little boys used to like to tease girls. You know, you've heard that. Uh, what's that, girls? Uh, what's that? Oh, can someone remind me? Pigtails and snails. And what's that nursery rhyme that boys are made of? of uh, girls are made of uh, sugar and spice and pigtails and nice, something like that. I can't remember it. Does anyone remember that? But when our little kid comes out, that's a great sign that he's attracted to you. And number seven, and this is the most obvious one of all, but yet many of you aren't paying attention because most men aren't doing the following. This differentiates all the different, the men who are in the user and spender category versus those men who are actually um, serious about a relationship. I don't know why I continually wipe my lens and my glasses. <laughs> but anyway, he progresses the relationship forward. He's intentional and he devotes his available time to you. I want to repeat that. He progresses the relationship forward. He's an intentional and he devotes his available time to you. Now, a lot of people are busy. And that's certainly a challenge these days. But ultimately, if you want a healthy, happy relationship, listen, forget the first couple dates. Forget the first couple months. Do you want a relationship where you see each other on a minimum two, three, four days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in your professional, personal and professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy? Is that what you want? Because many of you are settling for casual, cavalier, ambivalent relationships, thinking that something, thinking magic fairy dust will change this guy if all he did was saw your value. I can't believe how many of you will say after the end of the relationship, why couldn't he see my value? Well, because you guys didn't establish early on the rules of engagement. You didn't establish your standards before he got to have sex with you. Ladies, I'm sorry to say, I know many of it, it, it's a liberated time and sex is free and whatnot, but I'm here to say, you should, please, I'm encouraging you. You're like my little sister. If I can encourage you, please have sex with men who genuinely want to build a relationship. And your job is to weed out all the ones who don't. And believe me, there are a lot of dysfunctional men out there. There's a lot of users. There's a lot of spenders out there. And if you don't know how to, to pick better men, if you don't know how to attract those men in, and they do exist, there are the growers and builders out there. They do exist. It just requires a little bit more work on your part to find out who they are. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you're brand new. By the way, in the description below, and certainly my coaching uh, link is there, schedule a discovery call with me, follow me in my membership group, follow me on Instagram, or check out all the books I recommend. All right, those are the seven things men when they're what do when they're extremely attracted to you. I hope this provided value for you. I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big gigantic Jonathan Barrett of self love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye bye now. Bye bye.